Otto Dietrich was born in Essen and served as a soldier during World War I, where he earned the Iron Cross first class. Following the war, he pursued higher education, studying at the universities of Munich, Frankfurt am Main, and Freiburg, ultimately earning a doctorate in political science in 1921. Dietrich began his career in journalism, working for newspapers in Essen and Munich. In 1929, he joined the Nazi party, NSDAP, as a personal press referent, leveraging his position to introduce Adolf Hitler to influential figures in the mining industry, thereby securing funding for the party. His efforts paid off when he was appointed press chief of the NSDAP on August 1, 1931, and subsequently joined the SS in the following year. Hitler elevated Dietrich to the rank of Reichsleiter, the second-highest political rank in the Nazi party, on June 2, 1933. He was then appointed vice president of the Reich press chamber on November 1 of the same year. His ascent continued when Hitler named him Reich press chief of the Nazi party on February 28, 1934. In March 1936, Dietrich was elected as a Nazi member of the Reichstag. On November 26, 1937, Dietrich assumed the role of Reich press chief of the government and was appointed a state secretary in the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda. By April 20, 1941, he had risen to the rank of SS Obergruppenführer. In his capacity as Reich press chief, Dietrich wielded significant influence over the Nazi party's publications and newspapers, extending his control to include propaganda disseminated to various organizations such as the SS, SA, Hitler Youth, and the German Labor Front. His efforts played a crucial role in consolidating the Nazi regime's hold over Germany and propagating Nazi ideology to the masses. Dietrich's tenure as press chief often intersected with Joseph Goebbels's Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, leading to frequent clashes between the two figures. Despite their disagreements, Dietrich maintained a close relationship with Hitler, serving as a conduit for transmitting the Führer's directives to Goebbels. However, Dietrich's influence waned towards the end of the war, culminating in his indefinite leave after Hitler accused him of defeatism following an argument on March 30, 1945. After the war, Dietrich was arrested by the British and subsequently tried at the subsequent Nuremberg trials in 1949. He was convicted of crimes against humanity and membership in a criminal organization, namely the SS, and sentenced to seven years' imprisonment. Dietrich's conviction stemmed from his role in disseminating anti-Semitic propaganda, which incited hatred and justified the persecution of Jews. Upon his release from prison in August 1950, Dietrich lived in Dusseldorf until his death in November 1952. His legacy remains tarnished by his complicity in the crimes of the Nazi regime, particularly his role in promoting anti-Semitic propaganda. In his memoir, The Hitler I Knew, Memoirs of the Third Reich's Press Chief, Otto Dietrich offers a candid and critical perspective on his experiences with Adolf Hitler. Written during his time in captivity in Landsberg prison, Dietrich's memoirs provide unique insights into Hitler's personality, leadership style, and the atrocities committed under Nazism. The book is divided into two parts. The first part features Dietrich's assessments of Hitler's character, reflecting on his role as both a politician and a soldier. Here, Dietrich offers a critical analysis of Hitler's leadership, highlighting his flaws and shortcomings. The second part, titled A Scenes from Hitler's Life, offers first-hand observations of Hitler's daily activities before and during the war. Dietrich provides vivid accounts of his interactions with Hitler and details of the dictator's routines and habits. Dietrich's memoir is notable for its sharp criticism of Hitler personally and its condemnation of the crimes perpetrated under the Nazi regime. His willingness to speak out against the atrocities committed in the name of Nazism adds depth and credibility to his account. Originally published by Methuen in 1957 and later republished by Skyhorse Publishing in 2010, with a new introduction by historian Roger Morehouse, The Hitler I Knew continues to offer valuable insights into one of the most notorious figures in history. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.